Hello and welcome to the third episode of the History of Anime. In this episode we'll be looking at the 1970s. During this decade we saw many more studios pop up and a huge peak in the amount of anime coming out. And the Japanese film industry started to drop as TV became more popular. This gave anime a big boost in popularity and talent. We kicked off the decade with Ashita no Joe in 1970, a boxing anime that gained quite a bit of popularity and influence for many future sports anime. We had the start of another popular franchise a year later in 1971 with Lupin the Third. Lupin the Third helped push the popularity of anime and helped the future success of Miyazaki in the next decade. Madhouse was founded a year later in 1972, after Mushi Productions closed, many of the staff left to form Madhouse. They would go on to be one of the biggest studios in the industry. An equal important studio was founded in the same year, by the name of Sunrise also comprised of ex-Mushi production members. They would be one of the main contributors to the mecha boom in the next few decades. One of the big contributors for the mecha boom actually came from Toei Animation in 1972 with Mazinger Z. This show introduced many of the core features we still see in mecha anime today. The list of influences Mazinger Z had on the genre is massive. It really was one of the most important mecha at the time. In 1974 we saw the arrival of another very influential piece of anime history, but this time it wasn't a genre. With the release of Hidi Girl of the Alps, Hayao Miyazaki and Isao Takahata jumped into the industry. Although they had been involved with other projects in the past, this was one of their first successful works. The show, despite being quite different from the usual anime at the time, was very successful, not only in Japan but worldwide. The highly successful Space Battleship Yamato started airing in the same year. This would be another very successful anime, not only in Japan but worldwide. It got many dubs, including an English dub and a Greek dub. Yamato was a very important show as it started to push anime in the way of more solid storylines. Space operas would become a lot more prominent after the series. It was quite influential in terms of how serious anime started to become. Candy Candy in 1976 was another one of the early successful shoujo shows. It took advantage of merchandise to improve sales of the show. Another important and influential space opera was Space Captain Harlock in 1978. It was yet another series that made itself around the world, gaining many foreign dubs. Possibly the most important series in this decade came right at the end, as Mobile Suit Gundam. Now this series is extremely important for many reasons, but maybe not the most obvious reasons. When the series first aired, it didn't do that well. In fact, it was so unpopular that the sponsors cancelled the show, cutting off 20 episodes at the end. It was after the show had aired that it became popular, and not through the anime, but through the range of toys that were released. The popularity of the show exploded, and reruns of the show started to get a massive amount of attention. So after a false start, Mobile Suit Gundam started its lifelong influence. Much like Yamato, the series changed how anime was made. It was the start of a new and very important subgenre, the real robot genre. This is a realistic twist on the normal mecha genre and one that would be used to high success in the mecha boom of the 80s. Mobile Suit Gundam's influence will be realised more in the next decade, but even in the 70s, its influence was incredible. Galaxy Express 999 had quite a controversial impact overseas. After its Japanese release, the film version was released in America, but they didn't just release it. They cut out 30 minutes of footage from the film and changed various names of the characters. This made many fans of the series quite angry, as they thought it was the wrong way to watch the film. Yet another important landmark was in 1979, with the castle of Cagliostro. The movie wasn't super influential or successful itself, it was the directional debut for Hayao Miyazaki, who will also become very important in the next decade. So that concludes this very important decade. We see anime go from a fairly small medium for Japanese television to a worldwide market. But anime didn't stop in the 70s, in fact the 70s was really a setup for the next decade. A decade where we see anime evolve more than it has ever done before. So join me next time where I take a look at the 1980s. If you did enjoy this episode, please do click the like button and leave a comment with your thoughts on the decade. Thank you very much for watching and remember to subscribe for more anime videos.